Hello, Guardians. Welcome to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I'm your host, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, is the Jotun Toasted Vault Dwellin, Josh Finney. Hi, Corey. No, no reaction? Are you just going to let that one go? I'm going to be honest. My mind is just like, I'm not even here. What did you say? I said the Jotun Toasted. Oh, Jotun. Oh, God. I hate you. Ah. Yes, everybody. I bought the Jotun toaster from the Bungie store this morning. It doesn't even look I like a toaster. I spent $80 on a toaster. Mm. You know, you can go to Target and get one for like 25 bucks. This you is... know, I have a toaster that I bought for 25 bucks, and I still really <laughs> wanted the Destiny toaster. That's fair. I also would like a Destiny toaster. I'm putting on that Burton Toast Ingram or, uh, emblem and never <laughs> taking it off. Do it. Do it. I can't wait. Uh, man, Josh, what a week. What a... What a week, it's what a weekend. A very busy week. Oh, dude, my throat hurts. Like, I feel like I've been talking nonstop since last mm-hmm. Thursday when we recorded. <laughs> yeah, between now or between then and now, let's see. I did six during E3 itself, and I've already done two today. Yeah. So I'm absolutely wiped out. I'm so yeah. tired of doing I've, pods right now. <laughs> I've literally recorded one or two shows every day since we recorded this show yeah. last week. Same, 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 same. same. Uh, even yesterday, like nothing was live, but I recorded some stuff that needed to be done. Right? It, it, mm-hmm. it, it it's just like, oh my gosh, my throat hurts so bad. Uh, my eyes, I pretty much have them stapled open right now. Uh, I have a headache. It, sleep depravity is a real thing. Please go to bed, everybody. <laughs> but E three was fun. Uh, destiny awfully quiet the last couple weeks probably because of e3 and you know they don't really have a lot to show at this moment uh so josh Corey, i'm ready for some tower casuals i'm ready for tower casuals i'm ready to talk about destiny as excited as i was for e3 i'm kind of tired of e3 (laughs) i'm very tired of e3 (laughs) But uh, I'll be I'll be able to give give you uh, give you a little bit of a jolt here. It uh it's gonna be a short episode this week. We don't have a whole lot to talk about. Um, kind of like it has been the last couple of weeks. It's been oddly quiet around these parts. Mm-hmm. We do have Solstice starting up pretty soon, uh, but we really have to focus on the narrative here mm-hmm. uh, again this week. I think you know, we've talked about the narrative team and just how good that they've been. Mm-hmm. And that definitely continues this week um, with some major implications. Yeah, uh, you so told me the think... story stuff was really good this week. I I need yeah. to catch up on the story stuff. I'm kind of I think I'm like three missions behind just because I haven't played in two weeks. But uh... well, yeah, we're, we're we're gonna it's gonna like I said it's gonna be a real fast show. We're we're gonna talk Chwab real fast. We're gonna talk a little bit of uh, some things that happened in the vault this week with. Uh, the, the raid team and then we're going to jump straight to lore corner so that we can actually talk about the implications of this week great i'm excited uh, let's do it all right twab time twab i get that the real twab. deep get that real deep twab because my throat it feels like it's on fire it probably is <laughs> right now uh grandmasters are coming back tuesday at reset Mm. Very excited for this. Me um, too, because there's a black hung jury and it looks really cool. It kind of it's have, not really black. It's like a it's like a shiny charcoal. It's like a metallic. Yeah. It's a metallic charcoal. Almost. I would call it gunmetal. Yeah, gunmetal. That's a good one. I really, really, really like how these look. Um I like these uh, you know, of course, these are aspirational content. Each week, you'll be challenged by stronger enemies, tricky modifiers, champions, and beefy bosses while you hunt for rewards. Revives are limited, of course. Can we get a shirt that says beefy bosses? I I feel like we should make you one that says beefy boss. <laughs> uh, Guardians must be 1335 power to enter Grandmasters. Uh, mix up both pinnacle power and artifact power. Uh, you will be capped at 1335 when you go into these, though. Uh, do of course do your milestones, do your seasonal challenges. You'll boost up real fast. Mm-hmm. I was lamenting that I didn't think I'd be ready to do grandmasters, and in one night I jumped like four levels. Yeah. So, um, you can definitely do it. I'll need to raid one more time next week, uh, most likely to bump my power level to thirteen thirty five, since that's a plus two source now. Yeah. But I'm almost thirteen twenty across the board, natural power. Nice. So. Very excited for that. Of course, as Corey mentioned, adept weapons. You have your chance at an adept plug one hung jury 
for the uh, the sniper here, the uh, Uzum RR4. Mm, yes. I'm still trying to get a regular version of that, so I'll be in uh, Nightfalls this weekend trying to get one. I missed out on it the last time it came through. And then uh, starting on July 13th, the Nightfall rotation is going to enter a four-week cycle. Week one will grant you plug one. Week two will hung jury. Week three, Uzum RR4. And week four will feature a combination of Shadow Price, Palindrome, and the Swarm as possible rewards. Cool. So if you miss those, they will come back. You have a chance not only in uh, Nightfall or in a little bit of Grandmasters, but in regular Nightfalls as well. The rotation is going to change. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really tasteful way to do it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Price is a great auto rifle. I use it all the time. I love my Adept Shadow Price. I take it into the Crucible even though I shouldn't. Yeah. And it's awesome. I have Adept Range on it. It's, mm-hmm. it's just a fucking monster. So I love good. it. It's so good. So good. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, in my group use Hung Jury when we go into Vault, especially on like Oracles and on uh, Ad Clear and Atheon. I love Hung Jury. Uh, very jazzed for this sniper, this Amalon sniper rifle. Plug one um, during Double Nightfall week. I can't tell you how many times I ran Inverted Spire trying to get God rolls on this thing. Mm. Uh, That's a, I hate that strike, but it's an easy it, one to grind on, I guess. Yeah, right. Like it's it, it's it's a great time. Uh, really, really like that. Um, one thing that is specific uh, on August third is when all Grandmasters will open. You can do any of them. Mm. So if there is a particularly easy one, aka the Inverted Spire. Uh, you can go and do that on your given week to get the reward that you would like. Mm-hmm. Um, so, And, of course, we're going to have double Nightfall rewards at some point in the coming weeks, I'm sure. Again, yeah. they try to do that about every four or five weeks, I think, in a season. Right. Um, and then as we get closer to Season 15, we're going to have news on quality of life improvements regarding strikes. Changes are coming next season for the way you guild your Conqueror title and some nice changes for Zavala and Vendor rewards. Good. That's one of the things we've been screaming about for so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a lot of us thought the Zavala change was coming this season, and it didn't. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I fine. remember talking about that. I'm like, I thought about that the other day. Like, I wasn't really thinking mm-hmm. about it, but I realized I had <laughs> uh, Vanguard tokens in my inventory. I'm like, I thought this was supposed to change, and no, it did not. So. Uh, next thing, of course, is the Jotun toaster that I talked about. I'm very excited for this, even though it just looks like a generic toaster uh, with the Jotun logo on it. So cool, though. I'm, I'm still very excited for this. I 100% bought it, and I have no shame. Is that a bread uh, carrying case? It comes that is a too? bread carrying case. That's mm-hmm. a sandwich case with the Jotun logo on it. Worth it. Worth, Worth it. it. Uh, and you get a, you do, of course, get a, a special emblem. It toasts a tricorn onto your bread. Uh, I plan on doing this on my waffles as often as possible. Mm, waffles. Jotun waffles. <laughs> Never been Don't a better let your time memes for be dreams. <laughs> Gosh, dude. Very, very you're gonna get that you're gonna get the Series X mini fridge. You're gonna have the, the Jotun toaster. My, yeah, What's my girlfriend next? may have already brought both of these up already. And I was like, but they both look awesome. She's like, Oh, we're not disputing that, but uh you know, Xbox and chill is taking on a completely new meaning right now. Mm, I'm trying to convince my wife to let me get the Xbox mini fridge for the office. and It's not going over so well, guys. It's just not. She's like, what do you See, need a mini fridge for? I love that she wants it too. Yeah. So it helps. Yeah, but. It's about to be a beer fridge. Yeah, but your girlfriend house. plays games. That's true. It's my, true, she does play a lot of Sea of Thieves and some Destiny. Yeah, my my wife plays Mario Kart once every six months with me. So, <laughs> just tell, tell her it's a Mario Kart fridge. Yeah, okay. She's gonna be like, "Oh, what do you? It's how a you Walt that? Disney World Xbox Mini fridge mm. Mm. with Figment inside." Mm, don't tease me, Josh. I will buy anything with Figment on it. You know that. <laughs> So, um, do, 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 do you want to look and see if there's anything else that we need to talk about? I mean, uh, there's not really a lot in the TWAB. They they're talking about their not. their there's charity not. thing, right? Uh, yeah, G, GCX GCX has started. Uh, in fact, we're recording this right now. My name is Vife is going live with his. Uh, yeah. I believe Datto is uh, over the weekend, and of course, it's going to end with um, Doctor Lupo, like it always does. Mm. Bungie will have a block during this. I don't know exactly what day it is. 
Uh, but they will have a time. And that's when we got the Jotun Toaster announced last year. We got some concept art from Beyond Light shown. It is unlikely that you will get anything like that this year as an incentive, though, as they have not formally unveiled the Witch Queen. Yeah. Um, but it is worth noting. As uh, we're, we're, And guys, we're done with the twat. There's literally nothing else. Yeah, so I'm looking to make sure there's no note that we need to read here at the end. Um, you forgot um, the movies of the week, Josh. Listen, go check out the artwork. Go check out the movies. Um, I always enjoy watching this stuff. The Code of the Missile montage is actually pretty great. Yeah. Uh, I like watching all of this sort of stuff. Uh, like, oh, the, there is there is one other thing in the TWAB. The, what other the, thing in the TWAB? Well, the, the Prime Gaming stuff, the new oh, rewards for yeah, Prime Yeah, new Twitch Prime. Go not, get it. Not that it's important, but it's a ship and a ghost shell and a sparrow and an emote. So it's a great emote. It's the it's the rainy day emote. I actually like that one a lot. But mm-hmm. if you if you somehow don't have it yet, it will be part of Twitch Prime. Uh, we got a tease this week from one of the guys who works at Bungie, uh, Chris Barrett, who is leading development on one of Bungie on Bungie's next game, mm-hmm. um, on their new IP. And he is <clears throat> at the studio filming a reveal video of some kind. There has been a lot of speculation of, oh my god, are we going to get something during GCX? And I don't think you're going to get something during GCX. I think that Bungie Day is definitely a possibility to get something, though. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, and this is a Destiny podcast, so I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I don't know if it'll be Destiny related, because I mean, Chris was Chris was and is and will continue to be a huge part of Bungie. Um, I don't know if this is actually related or if this is for Destiny because he is the director of the next game at Bungie. Mm-hmm. Um, but he tweeted out an image yesterday on the 16th. Um, filming today, pretty surreal mm-hmm. and uh, excited to see my coworkers after over a year. And uh, the guys he specifically uh, tagged are guys working on this new game. Uh, that are producing it. One's a producer, one's the senior design lead. So I kind of wonder if they're going to announce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it. It's clear something is coming from Bungie Day. Whether that's the reveal of the next game, or it's just like, hey, here's the 30 years of Bungie, because this is Bungie's 30th anniversary. Um, you know, something is going to happen in July, though. And that is, Bungie Day is three days before Solstice starts, I believe. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't rule it out. It's not going to be the Witch Queen reveal, though. Everybody can go ahead and calm down. Uh, if it, it if it ends up being the Witch Queen reveal, though, I'm I'm going to lose my shit. Yeah, I'll I'll actually lose my shit live on camera. Uh, Bungie Day is the day before we do Tower Casuals. Uh, it is the day after reset. I stand corrected. Great. Uh, That'll be a big episode for us. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's funny because I got out of town that weekend too. So yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> naturally uh so th- that's really cool i think uh we'll we'll see what chris has chris doesn't seem to uh in the past he hasn't really teased things unnecessarily so but what i really want to talk about tonight is and this is lore corner is going to tie into this this week we got a gigantic piece of information in regards to the seasonal storyline at first you're playing it and you're like Okay, cool. I gotta, I gotta go do an override. And oh, what's this? What's this corrupted expunge event I have to go do? Mm-hmm. When you load in, you find out that the expunge network has been taken over by Taken, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of Taken. There are Taken bubbles everywhere while you're trying to make your way through this maze. So you're getting booped off of everything. There are yeah. fucking wall boopers. There's wall dicks. It's terrible. Great. I love me while some you're shooting doing wall this, dicks. Though, there is something up in the top left-hand corner, up above where it states where you, what your objective is. Mm-hmm. There is dialogue that starts appearing up there. Mm-hmm. We get confirmation after we exit the expunge event, after we complete it. Mithrax and Ikora tell us that it is uh, uh, it is uh, Kira, the Taken Vex Mind. That Sabathun controls. The center of the murder battery in the Dreaming City. Ooh. The middle of this simulation that is overtaking the city right now. Uh, This is monumentally huge for the lore. Mm -hmm. This is... I think this is an enemy that most of us did not expect to see 
or even hear about again uh, properly from the game characters until the Witch Queen. Right. I personally had always assumed that she was going to be, and it, the, well, I want to be very clear, the she she probably will still be a part of the Witch Queen. Okay. I don't I don't know anything. Like I got spoiled on something completely different related to the end of the season. Um, I do not know, in fact, what the final story mission is of the season. Uh, but now I think we can kind of put two and two together and say we're probably going to have to fight Kira, similar to how we fought Nox or Noxus. Noxus. Nox is my D. Nox is my D and D character. We're not fighting him. He could. You do not want to fight Nox. He's a cold blooded assassin who kills you in one hit. Uh, Noxus, however, you know we you take him down in the original strike, and then yeah. we had to kill him in the ascendant plane. I do wonder if it'll be a situation like that. Like maybe we don't fully kill Kira. Yeah, and she comes back in the Witch Queen as part of the raid. Yeah, I was gonna say, I bet she's like one of the raid bosses, like one of the mm-hmm. later ones. But I want to say, if that hap- if that doesn't happen though, we actually kill her for good here, because Destiny's been really willing to get to off major storylines, major enemies, major characters in seasonal narratives. Yeah, I think that opens the door for Zivu Arath to be the fir- the villain of like the first two thirds of the Witch Queen raid instead. Yeah. You take down Zivu Arath, and then finally everything is gone from Ron Savathun. Her, uh, her, both her sisters are down. Uh, Hash Ladoon is gone. Crota's gone, obviously. Uh, her, the murder battery, Kira, is gone. Riven has been destroyed. It's just her in the Ascendant plane. Right. Um, I think it'll be the first raid that takes place fully in the Ascendant realm at that point. You really think it's going to, the whole the thing The first is? boss encounter. I think the boss encounter is, at least. I think killing her for good is going to be in there, or it's going to be two phases. You kill her the first time, and then you jump through the portal, and that's where you kill her for good. Mm. Um, the Ascendant Plane is definitely going to play a role with her. Yeah. But this is this continues the tra- the trajectory that Destiny has really gone on for the last couple of seasons. I mean, we we started seeing this in Arrivals. You know, with major story beats being introduced to a seasonal narrative. And we're like, oh, wow, this is more than we ever thought. I mean, hell, even saving Saint-14 was a big deal. Yeah. That in the past would have been an entire DLC, probably. Right. Um, even back in the Warmind days, it probably would have been yeah, a cool like, thing. And if they would have kept nothing doing... Nothing wrong with that. If they would have like, done, like, kept doing paid expansions, right? Like, like Warmind and, and Curse of Osiris, Saint-14 would have definitely been one. Yeah, you, you, you get the feeling Saint-14 would have been one. There probably would have been Iron Lords one. Right. Um, but Arrivals kind of signaled a change in tone. And that was for the better, because the team that did Arrivals immediately went to go work on Chosen right after that. Right. Um, in terms of narrative. And I think we all agree, Hunt was pretty underwhelming in, term of, in terms of gameplay, but in terms of lore, it's actually pretty great. Mm-hmm. Um, all the stuff it does with Crow, all the Crow stories that we get... You know, finding out what he's been up to for the last couple of years since Black Armory. There's a lot there. And even introducing and name dropping Zivu Arath and Sabathun in that, like, it's pretty clear this whole year was kind of the build up to Sabathun. Like, we're kind of assembling the Avengers. It's very much like the portal scene in Avengers Endgame right now. Yeah. Everyone's kind of teaming up. We've all been beaten to hell and back by each other and by the Hive. It kind of feels like we're gearing up to deal with the Hive once and for all, though. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not once and for all, but like beat them back at least, because I do feel like the Hive and the Taken are still at the core of so much of what's going on with the Darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, hey, maybe we finally get the Veil in this. Um, I feel like you have to introduce something, though, for Lightfall and for the unnamed final expansion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you You have all that. There's a lot of speculation, though, around the fate of Osiris right now. And we've touched on some of these lore pieces already people are pointing to. Osiris is acting really weird this season. He is seemingly uh, okay with a coup in the tower. He's seemingly backing Lakshmi and uh, Emperor Hideo from, uh, or Executor Hideo, excuse me, from New Monarchy. Um, Jalal from Dead Orbit is kind of staying out of this, but he'll like he's gonna he's gonna wait inside with whoever the winner is and be like, "Ha! I always had your back. See, I was <laughs> always with you. I was on the winning team the whole time." Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty clear Osiris supports this. Saladin uh, tried to go talk with Zavala, and of course Osiris uh, talked him out of it. And I keep coming back to the lore piece that we got, the lore dump from Bungie just before Beyond Light came out, where it was just. 
paragraphs of lore about Osiris going to the places of these anomalies where the planets were and where they disappeared. He goes back to the Dreadnought. He encounters the pyramid ships at one point. Like, there's been a lot of Osiris storytelling going on since St. Fourteen's return, really. Yeah. Um, he he leaves shortly after uh, that. He, we see him confront Rasputin. Rasputin tells him where to find the uh, where to find the pyramids at. And he goes out there, and him and Anna both go out there, mm-hmm. and they both have completely different reactions. Osiris, it's noted when he comes back into the ship, Sagira says he seems different. Yeah. Um, and that's something that's really sat in the back of my mind ever since then, especially with the death of Sagira. Right. We don't really know anything that happens to Osiris between Sagira's death, uh, other than like she explodes in a burst of light, and Osiris is able to wield like all of the warlock supers at once. Yeah. Between that and us finding him almost getting killed by the High Celebrant when, uh, or not the High Celebrant, by but by a Hive Knight when Crow saves him, mm-hmm. and. Then he just ups and goes back to the tower. So we don't really know what's going on there. We don't know what happens in that time frame. And we're going to enter some pretty heavy speculation and spoiler territory here. Um, the personal belief I have is that there, there's, I think there's two or three different routes you can go with this information. One is that that is Osiris and he has been corrupted somehow, mm-hmm. which I think is probably the most logical explanation. Right. Um, the second to me is that Osiris is being kept in like a lock, a, tr- a trunk somewhere. He's just like tied up and thrown into a trunk. Like Harry Potter situation. Yeah, dude, he, he's fucking mad at Moody <laughs> right now. Um, and, uh, you know, Sabathun is using Polyjuice Potion over here to walk around in the city. Mm-hmm. But whoever it is, it's pretty clear like, and I mean, that's the perfect way to explain away Sagira. Like, oh, Sagira got killed. Yeah. Um, and we've... We've been lied to before by Sabathun and the lore. Yeah. The tr- remember the truth, the power book that we got from the Dreaming City. That mm-hmm. was all Sabathun talking to us, pretending she was heiress. Yeah. Um, it's been, you know, in the dark future that we get from Anna Bray, we get that lore book from her. Eris is Sabathun in that one. Yeah. It's like, okay, so who it, who really is it this time? Like, who is she? She could be any of us. She could be walking among us. Which leads us to today's lore entry. We're going to read this, then we're going to circle back to Sabathun being in the city. And this one's called Ripe. It's entry number seven. Seven out of ten. Number uh, number seven is called Ripe Beneath the Endless Night. I walk through the city on broken legs. I am conspicuous, but the people here grant me many affordances. I chose this form well. I sway and catch myself on a low stone wall. I am ready earlier than anticipated, but I must still learn the next step. I look up toward the false dusk I have hung, but it is not yet finished. I am afraid, but it is thrilling to engage in something new after all this time. Something unknown. I close my eyes tightly so they do not bulge. The feeling passes. I open my eyes and search the faces of the people around me for familiarity. I did not mean to. I twist inwardly with disgust. When they first reached for me, I reached back in acid mockery, and they opened themselves to me in stupid, naked innocence. I was giddy. My fingers raked their minds. I forced my will through them using only words and met no resistance. Their naivety was beyond description, and I feasted until my eyes welled with black tears. Now I reach as often as they do, and when they reach back, I am thankful. I speak with them. I seek their company, their companionship. This is not pity. For I know pity. What is this? I drop to both knees, clear my mouth, and vomit. The thin black fluid turns to vapor and disappears. I clench the gangling black mass that threatens to unspool recklessly from within this shell of flesh. My new arms are too thin, too weak. My new shell still bound with thick mucus. Not yet, I say. A moment of blackness, and then a man places his hands on me, on my shoulders, on my back. He asks if I am ill, and he sees my flat eyes, my teeth black with ripeness, and he prepares to scream. I let him keep his mind. I push breath up and through my ruined mouth and speak a simple lie. He stops, smiles, laughs, shakes his head. He points a finger at me in mocking admonishment before walking away. I swallow the the fatty morsel of his ignorance, and it gives me the strength to stand once more, cover my face, and resume my walk. I feel this form splitting beneath its wrappings held together weakly by wet strands of snow, 
And from deep inside, stirred by that last scrap of deception, I hear the oily growl of the worm. Even here, basted in deception, both ample and rich, the worm cries ravenously. It has grown grotesque, skin taut, overfed, and still it howls for more. It commands me to keep it alive. I look up beyond the flickering net of darkness and see what rests just beyond, waiting for me. And the worm roars. This is very clearly from Sabathun's perspective. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the only other person it could be is Zivu Arath, but I don't think it's Zivu Arath. I think it's pretty clearly Sabathun. Yeah. Um, Sabathun is in the fucking city. And that should be terrifying to everybody, regardless of what form she is in right now. When I initially read this, I wondered, is Sabathun in the form of a cat? Mm-hmm. Um, just the way that some of this is described. And I think that's still possible, but it's, def- it's definitely Osiris. She's definitely an Osiris a shell. The question is, is she possessing his actual body or is it a body that she's actually making? She mentions that the facade is cracking, mm-hmm. the, that the form is cracking beneath, but also mentions mucus. So it's not just a shell for her spirit. Um, I do wonder if she's truly taken over Osiris's body though at this point. Yeah. And you have to wonder that, and you have to start wondering, okay, kind of what comes next, because it's pretty clear they don't want to reveal the Witch Queen until the final season of Beyond Light. Right. That they're going to do, they're going to go for the one-two punch like they did with Arrivals. Um, but she's here, she's in the city, this is terrifying. Uh, this is no more hypothetical of her looking through Shaxx's Ahamkara skull. You know, this isn't the Traveler's Chosen dialogue anymore where she's just spying on Zavala. She is directly in meetings with Zavala right now and is deliberately separating him from others. It's exhausting him. Um, is placing doubts in his mind about people in the tower and around him. While at the same time, clearly fomenting insurrection amongst the future war cults and new monarchy. It's pr- becoming increasingly clear. Lakshmi is seeing what Sabathun wants her to see. Yeah. Savathun would love nothing more than to have the elixir wiped out right now because they're going to be a thorn, especially Mithrax. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a thorn in her side. Yeah. The crow, I mean, I mean, so this is the one thing that it's like, I don't know if this is like the real Osiris or not that's just been possessed or is possessed occasionally. Because why else would you send the crow to us unless you're planning on people finding out who crow is and that blowing up in the Vanguard's face as well? Right. Right? Yeah. You've got the spider who's pissed off now. Because of Crow's actions mm-hmm. and Osiris's actions, technically, yeah, uh, there you know there's a lot to consider here, and you have to start really wondering. You think there's going to be some sort of Elixney civil war type thing before, or you I think, think we over, I think we've already had the civil war, frankly. Okay, I think the civil war was really Aramis versus Varix. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. I guess we did already. Barrett's kind of turning his back, but also, you know, Mithrax. You know, Mithrax is evacuating people during the events of Beyond Light. Like, to me, it's pretty clear they wanted him involved, but just couldn't figure out a way to do it mm-hmm. with a pandemic going on. So that was the quickest solution. Right. Which, to be fair, was still a decent solution. We got him name-dropped a few times. Oh, he's... Varix is recognizing him as Kel of Kels. Yeah. That's a huge step. Yeah. Varix was kind the last major guy we needed to do that that we've interacted with because mm-hmm. Varix was trying to get himself anointed as that for a while yeah um i want to see i'm trying to see if i can find uh any dialogue for my core I, i'm on ishtar collective right now I'm trying to see if i can find any of the uh the lore for this week with her i think i just found it yeah, this is another one that I want to I want to specifically talk about. That's why I love going to Star Collective. You can see all the interactions you have with characters throughout the season. Akora's voice is grim as she explains that Quira's per, uh, presence in the Vex network means that Sabathun, the Witch Queen, is behind the Endless Night. When the time comes, I'll put a spear of light through the Witch Queen's heart myself, she tells you. For now, I'm turning over all hidden records and full archival access to Osiris but no one else. Continue your splicer training with Mithrax. Use it to root Sabathun's minions out. We'll reassess the situation we've located the target. 
fucking hell, guys. Come on. <laughs> like, you're trusting Osiris and only Osiris. Even she's not safe. We do know from one of the one of the weapons uh, of this season, I don't remember the one off the top of my head, but there's a lot of binary in the description, and when you do it out, it's Sabathun's song. Yeah. Sabathun's song is being sung by the inhabitants of the city. That's, I think we can take that as that's the lie she's been telling them. Uh, it's terrifying. As we know, Shax has sung the melody. Uh, Eris recognized it in Season of Arrivals as, uh, oh no, that's Sabathun's song. Get the Ahamkara school, skull away from that fool. Yeah. In her exact words. Uh, it's it's quite terrifying, in all honesty. Yeah. So. Yeah, this this whole, like, I don't know, like, it, it, it would be kind of cool to see in, like, a cutscene or something, because, like, it would be almost like a like a horror movie almost where like mm-hmm. you're watching either, you know, Shax or Osiris being possessed and you hear, maybe you see some kids running through the city, like singing the song, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like there's some, there's I some imagine cool... that's coming with next season. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I... And I want to bring up a few things that Mithrax says to us through the servitor as well. Um, this is kind of how the quest starts off this week. He says he feels a malevolent force pulling from the center of the Vex network. The same force he noticed when you first stepped into the network on Europa. He fears the Vex are being manipulated and that the Endless Night has a greater purpose than he thought. Darkness is coming for you, he warns. Uh, and then later on, you know, he tells you the force at the center of the network has a name, Kira. Uh, Mithrax pledges to use his abilities as a splicer to search through the Vex domain until he finds uh, its lair. He tells you he imagines his light as a beacon, something to use to guide others through the darkness of the world. He believes you were given your light to use as a weapon, and Kira is the target. Hmm. Um, there's, just, there's, there's just so much, you know. But even Osiris. So this is this is the curious one, and. Mithrax and Osiris tell you Kira, the dreaming mind, is the dark force at the center of the Vex network. Osiris will confer with Ikora on the best course of action while Mithrax refines his strategy. And I just... That is the only... That that particular dialogue is the only thing that kind of puts a dent in this theory to me. That Osiris is Sabathun and he's not just being like wildly manipulated instead. Is that maybe Sabathun is letting him see what he wants to see and relinquishing control occasionally, but then taking control again, or like guiding him instead of like right. taking over. You know, like. Uh... But I, I think that she—it's pretty clear she's taking over completely because you know, uh, yeah, he's giving me access that I never thought possible. She's clearly taking over Osiris, and Osiris's body can't handle it. Yeah, that's the interpretation I'm taking. So regardless, I think Osiris. Uh, maybe it's even the event that leads into the Witch Queen. Osiris sacrifices himself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very curious to see. We only have a couple weeks of seasonal narrative left. I think we have two or three left. Mm-hmm. And I'm very curious to see how they end because this has been absolutely bonkers so far. Like, in a good way. This has been great storytelling. They're just, they're continuing to crush it. Yeah. Um, the, just this, this narrative team has to get a lot of credit for this right now. Um, these are developments, again, we would expect to see these in an expansion. Yeah, these feel, um, and these I feel that, a lot like the yeah. stories that they're telling. Uh, I mean, like you said, they feel a lot like expansion stories. They don't feel like seasonal narrative stories. And I think, like you said at the top of the show, we need to give credit to this narrative team who've been telling these great stories. Right? I, I would argue the last two seasons in particular, maybe even the three seasons, have been were better storytelling than that than the expansion itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I really like Beyond Light, but I think, like, as far as, like, Chosen and Splicer are proven, I think that seasons can no longer be slept on in terms of storytelling. Yeah. Um, like, Beyond Light was great for what it did for the universe and moving it forward, and that's what an expansion should do, right? The expansion is the jumping off point for the seasonal story. Right. The seasonal story is what, you know, connects them and what leads into it, but you can easily play the expansions and still know what's going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just have to do some reading, but... I'll tell you right now, like, I don't think I could skip a season in Destiny anymore if I'm invested in this universe because it's just such good content. I would have to be, I'd have to be listening to Bife, or I'd have to be reading on Ishtar Collective 
to make sure I'm keeping up with it because it's just that it's that good and it's that special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's clear there. This story is about to go to the darkest place it's ever gone. Like darker than Cade's death, darker mm-hmm. than the attack on the last city. Like yeah, we're we're gonna lose it's some gonna people. Be bad. We're gonna we're gonna lose. Yeah, they gotta start trimming this character roster up too of these characters that have been around for too long. Yeah. Um, and, you know we we joke that Segura got killed off because Marina Baccarin voiced her, mm-hmm. uh, but that's probably not too far off from the truth. And a lot of us, myself included, very upset that she was killed off off screen. That, you know, this is Osiris, the greatest warrior that ever lived. We should have seen it happen on screen. Now it's becoming a bit more clearer why that didn't happen. Because that's probably about the time the switcheroo happened. So Osiris may still be alive somewhere. But we don't know. Yeah. And we likely won't know until Q1 of 2022. Yeah. Or until the very, very end of the the next season, whatever the season this fall is. Yeah, I would I would say probably towards the end of of next season, leading into the Witch Queen, I bet it would be a good time to. Yeah, because I feel like that would really set up the Witch Queen, right? Like I feel like that so, would really so set got, it up. I gotta ask you, you know, last thing before we get out of here, last kind of big question surrounding all this. We know a civil war is coming, and there is that thing on the uh, roadmap that says the epilogue yeah do we think that the civil war and maybe kira happen around the same time and that becomes the epilogue or that that's the final mission of the season and that's when we finally get the fallout yeah we get an end of season event or something yeah i i think the latter is, is what happens um I think that would be really cool. I think that'd yeah. be really unique. We should, we've we seen that they want to create unique arenas for these encounters, you know, uh-huh. even if it's reusing assets from before. Right. You know, the high celibate missions, we reuse some of the Ascendant Challenges and we reuse a lot of the Dreaming City yeah. for that. Um, but that was large. You know, other than that, you know, like the, you know, unique, you know, plotting and everything else in there. We They did a whole on strike for uh, Challengers Proving. Yeah. Uh, for the final quest there uh, with the strike and they, you know, the battlegrounds, you know, those are reused areas, but you used in a way that, Hey, we can actually use these instead of just leaving them there. And, Oh, we're not going to ever touch these areas. Right. It was like Where the only almost brand new sometimes. It was like the only reason to go to the Cosmodrome was that battleground. The Cosmodrome. I mean, I, I can tell you safely, I've never been to that part of Nessus yeah. that I remember, yeah. um, but it felt natural. Yeah. When you did it, that's the thing. Like so much so that I was like, "Oh, this is a cool new area." And then I found out in a random troll like three weeks ago, it was not a new area, and I mm-hmm. felt like an idiot. <laughs> uh, there was no tank there, though. Um, that's still something. Like I think you have to keep that up in real time. Like, oh, there's a tank here now. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's things like that, and I I think you have an opportunity for a really cool end of season event if you have like I don't know. Do a match made activity where similar to um, what was it the uh, the Undying Mind in season mm-hmm. of the Undying where you had to all go into the Vex network to kill him together. Yeah. Uh, what if everybody has to kill Kira? You know, yeah. in different timelines or something to make yeah. sure she's eradicated. Mm-hmm. Um, or I mean, I could. I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know if they're gonna pull a fast one on us. Like, uh, what if you have to fight? God, what if this is the first time you have to fight a Guardian? If you have to fight Lakshmi. Or maybe your dark self comes uh, back. Dude, there's so many. Po- You're going to have to fight your dark self at some point. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be before Lightfall, but you're fighting it at some point. Yeah. That's just too important of a plot thread to just drop. And this is this is destiny. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah. Remember when they dropped the stranger until they didn't? <laughs> now, now she's like maybe like the biggest turning point of this whole entire franchise at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the time so traveling so. on her. Yeah. We've had time. You don't just casually drop time travel. That means, Oh, okay. We dropped it in the lore. Cool. We'll be doing time travel in like a year. Yeah. Like what? beyond just the little machine that uncle drifter made for us to go save. Uh, a man <laughs> with a mohawk. Right. Like there's going to be something. Oh, uh, it's gotta, it's gotta happen. I, man, I still want to know how time travel is going to work in this game besides the Vex stuff. 
So time travel, I mean, with Elsie, it's pretty clear she's stuck in a loop because of the Traveler. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about um, it like divinely, and I, I could see, I could see the Traveler throwing us and Crow into a loop. Yeah, at one point, or throwing us into the past to figure out what's going on in the future. Uh, maybe all of Lightfall, or the expansion between this and Lightfall, or something, is us being chucked I... into the past uh, versions of these planets, or something, and we have to. I don't know. Fight our way through time. Like I still wonder if I still wonder if Lightfall, like that title, we lose, or something, and like that's when the time travel stuff comes back, where we have to go back and like try to reset the timeline or something. It's entirely. I mean, there's there's literally endless possibilities, and they've said that between Witch Queen, the unnamed expansion, and like we don't know if the unnamed one or if Lightfall is coming first. We assume Lightfall is the last one now, though. Um, cause they said they needed one more expansion to fully tell the story. So I assume Lightfall is the working title for the final one. Oh, really? I, I would, I, Lightfall. that's how I interpreted and assumed it when they made that announcement. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, like there, there are so many possibilities here. And if you're, if you have not seen this and you have not tapped into the story yet, I urge you to do as much reading as you can. Watch some life videos, go to Ishtar Collective. You can even look up by season and get seasonal lore. That's made it you know so much easier for me rather than reading every weapon or ship in game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just uh, God being able to go back and reference dialogue that's said to you by characters. I'm usually in a party with people that are talking over it, mm-hmm. um, so I don't catch everything even with subtitles. And like I'll play a mission on Tuesday. We record on Thursdays. I'm gonna forget stuff between Tuesday and Thursday. You shouldn't forget, so. Josh. I shouldn't. I feel like I need to sit through with a notepad now when I play Destiny. <laughs> but it's a good problem to have. Like the, the this was kind of the season that a lot of people were like, "All right, this is going to make or break the narrative team because they are, we know that they've been teams are alternating seasons. So this is the team that if you go back in time, they did season of the hunt, they did season of the worthy, and they did undying. Mm-hmm. This that's not a great track record. Okay. For either in-game stuff or for narrative. That's not really a great... I mean, to, to, I don't know if they have specific narrative people for each season or if it's a whole team. But that's not a great track record. Because yeah. the lore and the events in those seasons were really lacking up until Hunt. Mm-hmm. Hunt had really good lore. Mm-hmm. Worthy had good pre-lore. With with Shax and with the Warlords and the Iron Lords and all that. But ne- this was kind of the make or break. Because it's like, alright, the other team's crushing it. They did Dawn... Right. Well, they went opulence, dawn, arrivals, and chosen. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're doing the lead into the witch queen. Like, yeah, d- they're crushing it right now. What are you guys doing? Yeah. And uh, I, their response was, "Well, you know, fuck you guys. You're trash about us. Fine, you're fighting here right now. You're not fighting her in a raid. Raid team, go figure something else out. <laughs> we're we're gonna drop her and Sabathun into the city six months early." Gosh, what if what if the last event was a match make made event in the city to take out uh Kira? Of, yeah, Kira. Dude. Oh my god. If that dude if that happens. And then like once you kill Kira, she re- re- retreats into the ascendant realm and then that's when she becomes the raid boss, it, one of the raid bosses in the Witch Queen. I mean, even if we if we fight Kira, I will almost guarantee she's not going to die because this is Bunchy. Okay, that's what I'm saying. But then again, they're trying to be they're trying to be less predictable though. So I don't know. Like, well, I she, feel like Osiris she, meat puppet is pretty expected. Yeah. Well, she won't. That's she won't I, die. She'll just yeah. retreat into the ascendant realm like Oryx did in Taken King. It's true. It's true. I'm very intrigued to see where this ultimately goes. Yeah. Um, just a few more weeks, about five or six more weeks, and we should start having our first details on, uh, Witch Queen coming our way, though. I know, I'm so excited. So, or, not, God, I'm, I'm out of my mind. We got about two months. Yeah. We got about eight weeks. Um, <laughs> it's final, been a long week, Josh, it's okay. <laughs> it's been a very long week. But the seasonal narrative should be wrapping up here just before Solstice begins, or just as Solstice begins. Yeah. 
Um, there's only two more two more weeks left. We're at like six out of eight right now, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's just that there's that epilogue that I've got circled on my seasonal calendar, and I'm like, oh god, this is terrifying. It's never good when Bungie posts a group shot looking out over over an area. It usually means something bad's about to happen. <laughs> Does the helm finally take off? Is it is the wall around the city just a mini halo? Does the helm take off and it leaves us behind? <laughs> Dude, I, I know, right? I'm gonna be like, seriously, I have the cool ships, and you're gonna make me wait. Like, look, just let me look out in the hangar and see all my ships, not all those purple ones y'all gave me from year one either. Mm-hmm. Let me see all my legendary ships that I've acquired, my Christmas ships. Can I, can we get a sparrow garage too? Dude, I need a sparrow garage. I need I need to see Amanda working on like two or three sparrows of my choice. Like, I need the Santa slice sitting out all year. I need my tiny sparrow sitting out there and then my I need my mini sparrow. sparrow I need like my my like uh volleyball shaped go- not volleyball my uh my inflatable ghost mm-hmm. inflatable ball uh my one in the inner tube I need those like just hanging out in, like a little ghost kitty pool mm-hmm. I need and, like, my a shelf with all my shells I need my ghost that's wearing a ghost costume show mm-hmm. I, I need i need uh, i need weapon racks in there i need like trophies for my kills like i need to go steal tanix's head yeah. from the stranger's little uh you know peace pipe hut and go put it up in my room i want that above my bed yeah i want that i want like orcs's pinky toe <laughs> somebody better fly to saturn and go get me uh his toe from when he's floating around in orbit is his body still hanging out out there no, I'm pretty sure it got sucked in by uh, Saturn's orbit. Yeah. And burned up, which would be hilarious. Mm. He, he was a big, chunky boy. Yeah, he was, he was chunky. Kind of uh, Corey, do you have any final thoughts on this narrative, on where the story's going, where the game's going? No, I'm, I'm excited to get back into playing. Uh, I'm taking. I think I'm going to take a little time off just because this week was so draining, and just try to play some games and play Destiny and get caught up on the story and, uh, right, kind of get ready for not just next season, but uh, really try to find a good build to go into the Witch Queen with, and uh, you know, maybe try to hunt some of these weapons down, maybe finish some quests, maybe uh. They yeah. gotta do something about the drop rates on twelve eighty nightfalls, though. It's it's yeah. abysmally bad. Yeah, I think it took me like five or six tries to get something the last time, and it wasn't even good. And then like to get one hung jury. Yeah, and it wasn't even like a good roll. And then I got another one that was you said it was an okay roll. I forget what's on it right now, but uh, yeah, it's just it's kind of bad. Yeah, it's not it's not a great look. Especially, like, if the nightfall is, like, one of the longer ones and you're sitting there for, like, Dude, two or three like hours trying to get it through it, right? It's just right? Like brutally hard. Yeah, it's yeah. just... Mm, mm. And then you, like, you put the... I don't know. It, It's just... It looks bad. So. Yeah. Uh, Anything Anything else from you, Josh, before we get yeah, out of here? I, I've got it, man. I'm... Yeah. Ready to get on out of here. I'm ready. I'm ready to go close my eyes and wake up for another day at work. So I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to this episode of Tower Casuals. Remember, you can listen to it on your podcast service of choice. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Give us some five stars. If you're listening on Spotify, give us a thumbs up. Check us out. It's a good time. Josh, where can we find you? Twitter at Josh underscore Finn. Two ends. And every Monday for the next couple of weeks, you can find me on Q List, where I'm talking about how I met your mother. Ooh. Ooh. Breaking that down with our friend Logan. Yes. Really, really enjoying it. Enjoying going through and ranking Ted Mosby's girlfriends as we do it. Oh, Spoiler alert, they're all bad. Mm, they are. Most, yeah. Yeah. Remember the yeah. psycho one from like season six that like. We're, get, we're getting to her. Ooh. We're very close. Ooh. We uh, we were doing season five on Monday. Ooh. Uh, so we uh, we got to talk about some other random girls. And then season six will be Zoe. Uh, I love Zoe. Mm. And season seven is when you get the Jeanette. Season seven or eight is when you hit Jeanette. Mm. That's the crazy one. Yeah. Uh, you Spoiler get... alert, she's going at the end. Oh, gosh. Uh, you can find me at I am Corey and HG on Twitter. Uh, you can find me hosting the Boss Rush podcast every Sunday night uh, on twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Games Live. Uh, 
yeah, that's uh, that's about it for now. I want to thank everybody so so much for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. <laughs>